This rather battered bottle is a thermos. It is manufactured by a company named Thermos. When you have a drink that you wish to keep hot, you use a thermos to keep it hot. And then you can have it on the go. You can put it into your bag. You can bring it with you on the train. You can bring it with you in your car. Thermoses are fantastic heat retaining devices. But let's say, for example, you do not have a thermos and you're traveling. So now what do you do? You want to make yourself some coffee or you want to have some tea. Well, you don't have a lot of options available besides go find a cafe or I don't know, like wherever you're going to get coffee. Do you, people really buy coffee at like Wendy's or I guess they buy it from McDonald's. Anyways, what I'm trying to get to here is that if you want to make yourself a coffee or a tea while you're on the go, it can be quite difficult because one, you're driving and two, it's difficult to manufacture both while you're driving. And yet products like that existed before modern regulations regarding safety and distracted driving said you couldn't do this or you couldn't do that. Now I'm not going to slag on that, but those products exist and I want to talk to you about it today. This here is one of those products. Uh, it is called the Mmm, coffee maker. This was a very popular product in the 1960s, 1970s, and 1980s. Um, their quality is dubious to say the least, but the idea here is that it's a self-contained coffee maker beverage warmer that just plugs into your vehicle's cigarette lighter and that's how you prepare your drinks with it. This one here is actually in fairly good condition. I got the second hand and it almost feels like it's brand new. Um, but yeah, let's just go over it here. First off, I love the packaging here. It's very stylish. Uh, selected as a superior goods at the Japan Export Trade Fair. I'm, I'm going to be stingy on this. You'll see why. The car, your moving room, self-made. Enjoy your driving by hot coffee or tea with auto coffee maker. Like I said, I was going to be stingy about this. You'll enjoy your driving, boating, and traveling with the Mmm co Auto Coffee Maker. And it has little inst like illustrations showing all three of them there. It's, this is really showing its age, by the way. And on the back of the unit here, um, just plug into the cigarette lighter socket and you will get hot coffee or tea within a short time while driving. While driving. That's the interesting one here. You can't be pulled over with the engine off just listening to the radio while you're doing this. You have to make sure the engine is running because you need your alternator to be, one, topping up your battery, but also giving you a consistent voltage. And that voltage changes a little bit between when you're just idling and when you're actually driving. And it actually says down here as well, the time required for brewing is 12 to 15 minutes highway or 20 to 25 minutes any other road. Okay, cool. Uh, the capacity is 500 cc cubic centimeters. Uh, okay, whatever. It was a different time. Uh, voltage wattage, 12 volts DC by pretty much every vehicle out there. 140 watts, which is suspicious. 140 watts isn't a whole heck of a lot. Actually, that's really not a whole lot at all. That's not great. Okay, well, it is just a resistive heated element. Um, I'll try and show that to you in a little bit here. Um, but other than that... So here's a photograph of it, um, just kind of chilling out there. Um, and it clips into the door panel. There's a piece of metal that should be in the box here, and it just kind of, you bend it, and then you put it into the window channel, and then you can just kind of leave it there while you're driving, which, I don't know, that doesn't seem like a great idea. If for some reason it falls off or it spills, it's falling on you. Not a great idea. But, uh, oh, there is a note here. Do not plug in when empty. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Okay, we've gone over the box. Let's just open the thing up. And it does genuinely... Oh, there's no metal bracket in here, is there? Okay. It does genuinely amaze me just how otherwise, like, it feels like it's brand new. So here's our, here's our instructions. So it basically just covers exactly the same thing that we just talked about when we went around the box here. But it has four languages, English and three others, one of which is French. Okay. And then we have, this thing really is new. Wow, it's clean. 
Um, so uh, the way these work is that it's just a very cheap and easy blown plastic. You have the metal bracket that's hanging out in the back here, which is used for that like window door clip thing here. And then you have your power cable as well. It's not fused. So if there's anything that goes catastrophically wrong here, you have no protection on these things here. They're not thermally regulating. I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, it is a rather nice heavy cable though. In fact, this plastic seems okay. It actually all seems, you know what? Maybe I take that back. This isn't as thin of a plastic as I was thinking. This is kind of nice. I do like the sticker here too. Oh, it's no longer mmm. It's MMM apostrophe S. So it's mmm's coffee now. So self-made, enjoy hot coffee. So the idea behind these here is that you can put your tea in this thing and you can let it steep if you wish. But when you take the lid off of it, there's one cup, there's a littler cup, and there's a strainer here. So not only can you put your tea in here along with your water and let it like heat up and boil away and then you have a nice easy tea, you would also add your water in here and then you would add coffee grounds and then you would let that steep away inside of here and brew. And then when you went either with the little cup here or the bigger one, you used your strainer and you would pour the slurry of coffee grounds and water through the strainer and that would give you a probably rather bitter cup of coffee. And then you gotta figure out what to do with cream or like sugar or something like that or what you're gonna do with the coffee grounds now that you have this. I think this is really an application where instant coffee would make an awful lot more sense. Really though, I still insist, a thermos is probably gonna be a lot better than this because then you can make your drink exactly as you wanted it before you left. Um, there's the heating element down inside of here. Uh, I think you can just kind of see it inside of there. So the idea here is it is just a giant resistor that's coiled around and has to be immersed at all times when it's operating because the water is being used to help regulate the current. With no water, it's like a nuclear reactor. It will just overheat until it melts down and something catches on fire. It's, it, it gets bad. You don't want to do this. There used to be a whole bunch of these really cheap, like... It's like you plug it into the wall and you had a little heat element that just kind of dropped into your like cup of coffee or tea or whatever and that's how you heated it up. I don't even think you can buy those anymore unless you go to AliExpress. Even this whole coffee maker shenanigans right here. I haven't seen versions of this available for sale since like the mid 90s. Everything else is like used secondhand store stock. And I think there's a modern take on this but it's like AliExpress and Amazon specials stuff. Um, I bet you it works in the exact same way that we're seeing here. Now, we have an opportunity to demonstrate this here. It's like nice and clean and pretty. And then while I was working on this, I found another one. And that one there amused me even more. Okay, let me just get this all put back together here. I do like the metal screen on this. So that just kind of goes back together like that. And I will set this one off to the side. There we go. And like I was saying, I found another one. And that one there, exact same thing as this, but it had one extra feature which really caught my attention. And that's this buddy right here. So first off, this one here isn't the mmm, it's the auto beverage or auto coffee and hot beverage maker. It has a Canadian tire price tag of $10.95. This feels a little bit more modern. I mean, at least you now have color on the packaging, but it also shows here a Campbell's soup can. So this here does everything that this one did, but also it's now big enough that you can put a bottle or a can or even like a baby bottle in it. And it even says right on here. Was there somewhere on here? No, I think it was on the front, yeah. Um, Ideal for hot coffee, tea, soup, etc. Heats baby bottles and canned food. And it shows a baby bottle or a baby food right there. So I guess you can just kind of put it in there and heat it up. Now, inside of this, first off, $3.99. I'm not breaking the bank when I find these things. Like I've already said, the quality can be kind of dubious. This stuff is almost throwaway junk at this point. 
So we pulled this one out. Ah, there's the metal piece. So this is what I was talking about before. Um, this is exactly as we remember from the other one. It's just, as you can see now, uh, slightly larger. But ow, with this metal, I got a sliver from that actually quite badly. Ow, this table's trying to get me. Where was I? Right. So with this bracket here, the idea is it has these slots right here. So you take the bracket, you just kind of measure out the width of your door frame to where the window is, and then you bend it. And then you drop it down into the little channel where the glass is against the window seal. This hangs out over the side. You use your metal clip. There you go. And now you have some way to hold it rather than kind of like nudge it against the seat or keep it in the passenger seat or, I don't know, holding it between your legs or something like that. All right, I guess it's a solution to one thing, but it's, it's, it's really janky. Like, it's just a piece of metal that's painted and like got these slots stamped out in it. But this here is, I don't know if it's coming across on the camera, but I really feel like this is, it's older and I'm questioning its quality, but the quality of this is significantly higher than this. And I'm almost willing to mock Canadian Tire here because it does specifically say imported by the Canadian Tire Corporation Limited, made in Hong Kong. This here, on the other hand, actually on the underside of this, does specifically say made in Japan. What is it with Japanese stuff? They always say it's inferior, but at the end of the day, it turns out to be something there always could be worse. So we open it up. We have a considerably bigger cup now. We have this smaller cup. Our strainer no longer has a metal mesh. It is just plastic. And then we have this little stand that's hiding inside of it. So the purpose of this here is that it just raises the can or the bottle or whatever above the heating element that's sitting down in there. So it's not directly sitting on it and I don't know, directly heating the metal or glass surface of the bottle or jar or container. If you also look further down in there, there's a light bulb. So this one here has the exact same thing. The idea here is that when you're using these and it's just water inside of them, you plug it in, you have a light that you can see through the base here and that tells you that it is operating because otherwise this thing is taking its sweet time supposedly to boil the water and there's no other visual verification that it's doing so besides getting distracted from what you were doing, driving and actually like physically checking. So I don't mind that at all. Uh, this one here, however, I can see this has been used and it's actually started to melt through the bottom of the container. Um, and oh, right. And then there's also the wire here, again, unfused, quite thick wire, but then it's melted here to the point that I can see copper wire exposed through here. So yeah, good quality here, boys. Lastly, of course, there is instructions with this as well. It actually has specifications too, cool. So capacity is 700 milliliters. Again, it's a slightly larger bottle, 12 volts, 140 watts. So this here and this are 140 watts. I don't believe that at all. I, that, that must take forever to heat up. I don't, I don't believe it. I don't. Uh, time required, 15 minutes. Well, it actually gave us more strict specifications of 12 to 15 minutes or 20 to 25, depending on my driving conditions and if the engine is running or idling. Uh, and then yeah, for directions, fill beverage maker with water, desired level, add soup, hot chocolate, instant coffee, etc. Both of these have a red line or a green line, which tell me where the, like, the upper limit is to how much water I want to put into this. Uh, this one actually has a red mark at the bottom, which tells me when it's too low. That's cool. Uh, and then here we go, baby bottles and canned food. Caution, before heating canned food, always remove LTD, the lid. Um, okay, sure, just crack the top of the can and there we go. Place stand and container over heating element, we've done that. Put bottle or can on stand, fill container with enough water to heat bottle or can. Plug in and watch carefully so that it does not overboil. So it's the exact same instructions for both of these here, just with the extra steps so I can actually like cook something in a can here. And you know what? I have the option here to test both of these in a vehicle, but I feel like that's gonna make for a fairly lengthy video and 
since both of these are going to make coffee no problem, that's going to be redundant. So I am going to take this first off, put it back together, and I will grab our bracket here, and I'm going to go take this, I'm going to hop into the car, I'm going to drive out in the middle of nowhere, and then I'm going to cook myself some food, and I'm going to make myself some coffee. And I'm going to bring along a couple supplies as well. Again, keeping in mind, a thermos would have solved this a long time ago. And um, let's see what happens. So, let's head out to the car. As an unsolicited advertisement, and as someone driving an 80s station wagon, I would like to recommend that everybody who wishes to play sci-fi and horror play the brand new game Pacific Drive, where you play the role of an unknown person driving a beat-down 80s station wagon with a personality through the terrors of the Pacific Northwest and the Olympic Exclusion Zone. Now available on Steam and other platforms today. All right, so we are, for example, out on the road somewhere, and I need something to eat, but there's no restaurants around here, and by chance, I have myself a can of Chef Boyardee. Well, this is one of those fantastic times where our little tiny portable kettle, cooker, whatever you want to call it, terrible piece of plastic is going to come into handy. So here it is, I have it right here. Now, let's get this all ready to cook a can of Chef Boyardee. So we'll take everything out of there, except for our little tiny stand. We'll take our can of Chef Boyardee and we'll put it inside. I will now crack the top of the can of Chef Boyardee. There we go. Now I will briefly take that out again because I've realized, oh wait, I need to add water to this thing. Well, water's gonna be difficult to get at right now and for some reason, I keep a bottle of water with me. So we have a water line in here that we wanna put this up to. So let's start adding our water. And I'm gonna bring, bring it in just a little bit below the line that we need. And then I'm gonna put our can in there. Oh, first thing I see is that it's gonna overflow before we ever reach the top of it. So you know what that means? We gotta dump a little bit of water. There, that's a little bit less water in there. Let's try our can now. Okay, so I guess we're gonna have to kind of cludge it here and get this in. Okay, there we go. We are now at our water line. So now we can take the cap of this and put it on top. And then lastly, all we have to do is plug it into the vehicle. Now my suggestion here is to use an older vehicle because in theory it's gonna have heavier duty or wiring for the accessory jack, or in this case here, it's still legitimately a cigarette lighter. And in we go. And immediately, do I see a light? Do I see anything happening? Oh yeah, I do definitely see something happening down here on my voltmeter. So, I'm going to turn on my headlights just to kick up my idle, and then I'm gonna leave it here. Now, while this is cooking away, we're gonna take our flimsy piece of metal here and get it ready to sit it right here next to my seat. So we'll take the metal, and I have to kind of guess out where it is, and then we just gotta bend it like so. Now, I can roll down my window, stick it into the window seal, and then there's my bracket. And then I can take this, it's actually getting warm, and that can just sit there. Yeah, that looks dumb, doesn't it? There, it does take a little bit of adjustment to get it done the first time, but there it is, it's kind of clipped over and it's gone down into the well there for the, uh, mirror, or for the window, and there it is trying to boil itself away, and it's already been something like six minutes already, 
still nowhere near ready. So I'm just going to sit around here and wait, and I'll update you once it's time. You know, something has occurred to me here. This is fairly heavy cable, I understand that. The cigarette lighter, on the other hand, well, that's different. I can actually feel this is getting quite hot. Like, that's out. That's burning hot under there. And you know what's even worse? The wiring underneath the dash is also getting incredibly warm. Too warm for my liking. So we're actually running into a legitimate problem here. Sure, it's a nice heavy wire gauge into there and a nice large heavy heating element, and that's probably cranking the maximum 15 amps that the wiring here will allow. The vehicle, on the other hand, not the right case. This is the original wiring, remember? How often do you change a vehicle's wiring harness? It's designed for the short but heavy loads of a cigarette lighter warming up, but not this thing at least not for the last 10 minutes, so I bet you we're getting an incredible voltage loss across this thing. Okay, I think it's time for plan B. Remember how we installed this last year and people were complaining I wasn't supposed to be running my inverter with the engine not running? This here is a 30 amp dedicated line. So I can guarantee you the gauge of the wiring heading back to the battery is going to be a lot heavier than even the wiring here. So now we get to see just how much faster this will work. Unfortunately, it means I can't clip it in next to my seat. Look at that. The results are actually almost instantaneous. It's already got starting to boil and actually bubble around it. It was taking forever ever up at the front dash. So yeah, definitely, we were dealing with incredible voltage sag over the wiring in the harness of the car. Running a super heavy line up to the heater? Yeah, that makes it a lot faster. I don't see the light. Has the light broken on me or is it burned out? Well, we can already, we can still visually see, yeah, it is plugged in. Yeah, it's getting plenty warm in there. Yeah but we still got a number of minutes to go. And here we are at the 15 minute mark. We finally have a pretty aggressive boil going on here. So yeah, absolutely. You need high current wiring to make this practical at all. You also obviously need the engine running. Otherwise you're gonna murder your battery trying to make this thing boil. You need that alternator working. All right, well I'm gonna let this go for a little bit longer here and then I think it's time to enjoy our Chef Boy RD. Oh yeah, look at that. It's really boiling now. Okay, she's done. Let's unplug it and let's go and enjoy our food up front. <sighs> there we go. So we can now enjoy this here and I've turned the vehicle off so you can actually hear me. So I'll take this off. Ooh, it's steaming hot now. Okay. Uh, ooh, how am I supposed to do this here? Okay, so I go down here, and I guess I can eat it out of the can. I think there was an assumption here that you didn't have this option at the time. Throw that on the floor where I can clean it later. Oh God, uh, uh, it's still, it's, it's room temperature. <laughs> Maybe I'm supposed to mix this? Oh, this isn't, look, I, I got a bad feeling about this. How am I supposed to, oh God, oh God. Okay, hold on. Oh, this is, okay folks, on YouTube, we're going to watch a disaster happen here. Let me just pour this over. Wow, okay, I stand corrected. That is genuinely steam coming off of that. So this, Actually, it's overfilled. Not so hot that it's scalding, but it is there. All right, here we go. And uh, now the moment of truth. Is it actually warm? It's actually hot. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, I guess the top... I guess the top of the, um, the can was not in the water, so... It was taking the longest to um, cook. 
But all the ravioli had worked itself to the bottom. The, ravi the ravioli is uh, hot all the way through. This is really not all that bad. Let me finish this off. Steaming hot. Little bit more in there. Oh yeah, this is good. Yeah. Overall, I'm finding this to actually be quite pleasant. So, I mean, it did take over 15, almost 20 minutes to get this thing to a boil. And that includes the time I was sitting here waiting as well, waiting for this, like, voltage limited cigarette lighter wiring to actually get this thing heated up. Ultimately, what it took is that it needed a full link to the battery. It needed that. And sure, that's an excuse that I can pass off today, but on a vehicle of this vintage, that's almost unacceptable. Now, there may be some resistances that have built up over time in the wiring and in the connectors in the vehicle. Still, that's not promising or really all that welcoming. Now, the instructions also did strictly say this wasn't just for cooking your food in there. It can also be used for warming beverages. Probably the most obvious beverage that you could warm up in this is coffee, but I wouldn't want to put coffee in there, at least not any ordinary coffee. That's why we're going to try instant coffee. That's right, for the first time in my life, we're going to do it with this. The instructions also say that if you just did a can and boiled it in here, don't reuse the water. So I do have some extra water. I have to receive, retrieve a little strainer out there. So give me a moment. Let's just dump that out. Ooh, that's hot. Ugh. All right, so with that out of the way, let's get our water again. And this time, I'm not going to do a whole heck of a lot of coffee, okay? Maybe not so much because I'm not a coffee drinker. I am a coffee drinker, actually. But I'm just going to pour some water in here, just enough to cover over our little tiny... There we go. Just enough. That there. So I'm now going to go, and I'm going to start the car again, go to the back again, bring it back up to a boil, and then let's try some instant coffee. Now, since there's considerably less water and pretty much no mass in this thing to warm up, this actually comes to a boil relatively fast or close to a boil. I don't need this scalding hot for coffee, so I'm gonna call this good. Let's take our drink. Ugh. All right, lights off, fan off. Let's turn the vehicle off here. So we have our hot water, and now I have to figure out here we go. How to add instant coffee to this. Uh, well, both my hands are busy. Okay, let's put this back down here again. So the instructions here say, uh, place one rounded teaspoon of coffee into a mug, add boiling water, stir and enjoy. Um, I'm assuming, what, I'm assuming that's like one cup of coffee there. So let's take this. There's one, oh God, one rounded teaspoon. I don't have that. So let's just do a half and call that good. Okay. And now I know it already smells bitter. So I brought along some hot chocolate. So I can actually add to this as well. And think of it like a mocha. There we go. So hopefully that'll help us. And then, uh, okay, hold on. Do I still have some water? Yes, I still have some water. Give me a moment here to rinse this out. There, much cleaner. So let's thread that on there. And then let's give this a little bit of a swish. I think that's thoroughly swished now. Now I can use this as one giant monolithic cup here. Or, remember, with the strainer, we had this cute little tiny cup that went along with it. I, I genuinely don't know why to use the strainer here, so... Okay, so let's just kind of pour us out a drink. There we go. We have ourselves 
our mocha. There we go. Okay. All right, coffee for me. Don't forget the pinky. You know what? That's actually not bad either. Okay, instant coffee and a little bit of hot chocolate makes a great mocha. This isn't too bitter. Ooh, yes. Ooh, that is a good coffee. And it's also nice and hot too. So even like right now where you can probably see that my brightness is being completely thrown off in this car because it's snowing outside. And a cold day like this, like a hot meal and a hot drink, this is fantastic. So after that somewhat long wait for my meal to heat up, followed by a rather pleasant drink, I'm able to finally repack this thing all back together so it looks like this and I can go rinse it off at the house. Unfortunately, it also generates a fair amount of other, other clutter. So we have our instant coffee, our hot chocolate mix, our tin can, and of course the water that we had to bring this all in. Okay, well, we'll throw it there, and let's head on back to the house. Even though this is new, well, okay, this one here is a lot more used, but this one here is new. Um, Spec-wise, they're exactly the same, and for both of these, I can't recommend them. In a modern car, like, sure, like, you have a USB charger or maybe a power inverter, a low, like, low wattage power inverter. Like, that's fine. This here was not drawing 140 watts. It was drawing something way way more. I had to go into a different circuit which was fused for 30 amps with far heavier wire gauge before even with the engine running I could be able to um, boil water to warm up a can of food. This thing here, like it was a neat gimmick. I won't deny. Being able to have coffee and hot ravioli was enjoyable but as a result it generated a whole bunch of trash that then I had to somehow carry around with me I had to supply the water for it. It took forever to cook, and I had to basically pull over to do all of this. And there's always that constant risk that you're just going to like spill it and you're gonna make a mess. And I'm being particularly hard on this, even though I didn't actually review it, it's the same thing. Like, if you're going to brew coffee in this thing, again, you risk making a hell of a mess and you clip it to your window. And if anything happens, you spill and it's gonna make a hell of a mess and you risk yourself getting burned. And even if you just want to like keep these around to use it occasionally with a vintage car, well you saw with me here, like my wiring harness is relatively unaltered and it was not enjoying this at all. And that, like it was designed pretty much for that. So that's kind of a disappointment really, but uh, I really hope that you enjoyed watching this. And my recommendation is really get a thermos. Like, it doesn't need to be this exact, like, make. It doesn't have to be the style. It doesn't even have to be made by thermos. But anything that is, like, an insulated food or beverage carrier like this immediately erases, like, whatever usefulness these are. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, I hope you enjoy watching me do these little automotive vehicle accessory reviews from time to time. And until next time, have a good one.